I've been using a variation of MacBooks for around 15 years or so now as my personal laptops, so I've got a pretty good grasp of the system overall. However, when I do grab a new one, there's so many changes I have to make to it, and some of them are obvious and some of them are not so obvious. So in this video, I wanted to show you how I set up my M2 MacBook Air 15 inch, and this goes for any MacBook to be honest, from top to bottom for all of my creativity and productivity focused workflows, and to give you some tips and tricks along the way. So let's get right into it. Okay, first up after unboxing it, I always recommend plugging it in straight away so you don't run into any power issues. And after that, you're going to be greeted with the wonderful animating hello screen from Apple. These first few initial setup bits are really obvious so you don't need a lot of my help with it. So keep hitting next until you appear to the accessibility page. On the accessibility page, there's a bunch of stuff which you probably will know that you'll need if you need it. So go through there and have a look. If not though, just hit not now and move on to the next page. Next up, you need to make sure you're in range of a Wi-Fi network. So get on that and make sure the signal is nice and strong. Move through the data and privacy screen and then you'll be greeted with a data migration assistant. This is useful if you're coming from an older Mac or if you're coming from a Windows PC and you want to keep everything with it. But for me, I always like to set up my Macs fresh and brand new so I know it's not cluttered from the get-go. So I just hit not now for me on this one. Next up, you'll be asked to sign in with your Apple ID. If you've already got one or if you've already got an iPhone, this will be really obvious, but if you don't, you can make a new one here too. After that, you're going to be asked to make an account. I always just use my name for this to keep it nice and easy, and I think of a strong password, but one thing you want to make sure is make sure the box is ticked where your Apple ID can reset your password, so if you ever forget it, you can get back into it through a different device if you need to. The next screen is going to ask you about location services and things like that. I generally leave this on default. I don't really touch anything here but if you want to change some things then you can. I leave app analytics off but if you want to turn those on if you work in a lot of apps where you want to report the data that's fine. Other than that I leave this as it is and just hit continue and once you do that will take you through to touch ID which is 100% worth setting up. This works as Apple Pay on your computer but most importantly this works as a lock so you don't have to remember passwords or things like that you can just use your fingerprint so make sure you do set that up. Next up it's going to ask you if you want to set up Apple Pay on your computer which just brings all your credit cards from your iPhone over to your Mac. I personally don't like having this on my Mac because it makes it way too easy to buy stuff so I always just cancel it or hit setup later because I just don't want it on my Mac. And then finally after all of that you're greeted with the home screen. Okay, so the first thing I recommend doing when you get to this screen is to sort out some general settings because there's loads of things which absolutely need sorting. And the first one for me is the trackpad. So if you go down to system settings and then scroll right to the bottom of there, you'll find the trackpad settings. Now I find the trackpad is really slow off the bat, so I love cranking that up to about 75% and then it feels a lot more kind of natural to me. And the second thing I do is also turn on this tap to click. If you don't do that, you have to physically press the trackpad for it to click. But with this tap to click, you can literally just tap it like you would on a phone. I much prefer that. After that, it's worth jumping up to the display setting and then turning off, for me at least, True Tone. True Tone basically adjusts your Mac so it's easier on your eyes, but I work with so many photos and videos that I need the screen and the color to stay exactly the same so I know what I'm getting. So I always turn that off. You might not need to, but for me, that absolutely has to go off. And the second thing is I turn off automatically adjust brightness. I much prefer doing that with the keys on the Mac itself rather than let the Mac try and decide that for itself. Lastly on this screen is an option for more space. Now I quite like it on default, but if you click more space, you actually get a lot more room on the Mac to move around and have bigger windows and things like that. So for me, I'm gonna leave that on default, but I know a lot of people prefer having more space. So take your pick on that one. The last thing here on the general settings is to change your wallpaper. Now you can pick any of the ones that Apple have included. They're actually really, really nice. But if you know me at all, I like having my own custom ones. And I'm actually really excited to say we just released a new pack. This is called Elemental. We've released these in collaboration with Canoopsy and they're a set of five wallpapers which look absolutely stunning across desktop, tablet, and mobile. And honestly, I couldn't be happier with how they turned out. The colors here are really wonderful and they absolutely pop off the screen. So if you want to grab them and help support the channel, I'll link them below. So from there, I close the settings and the next big thing I have sought out on every Mac is the dock because honestly, the way it comes is just not for me. So if you scroll down to the dock and right click it, you should have a menu which pops up which gives you some settings, but we're gonna to go to dock settings to give us absolutely everything. And the first thing I do here is to decrease the size of the dock. I find it's a bit too big and it looks kind of comic-y. So I always bring it down to quite low just so it gives me a bit more room. And the other thing I always do is make sure the magnification is off. Some Macs used to come with this big magnifying thing so you can see where your mouse is on the apps. 
but I just have it turned off and it should be like that as default. So just leave that off. Moving on from there, there's the position on the screen. Now a lot of people have this on the left or on the right, so you can get a full screen to work with all of your windows and things like that. But I actually prefer it on the bottom, so I'm going to leave it there. I came from Windows to Mac, so having everything at the bottom of the screen just makes more sense for me. Underneath that is an option for double clicking your window to get it to do different things. By default, it zooms in, so when you double click at the top, it punches into the app, but I don't really find that very useful. So I always change that to minimize, which means if I double click the top of an app, it goes down into the bottom window, which is just way more useful for me. And talking of minimize, I always check this next button as well, which minimizes the windows into the icon of what they are. So as we're in settings, if you minimize that, it actually goes into settings rather than into this bit here on the right. I think it just makes the Mac look a bit cleaner. Another thing I do here is to toggle show recent applications in dock. I actually have this off because I find it makes the dock really kind of messy and I don't like that, but you can leave it on if you like. It just pops up with your most recently used apps at the bottom right. And if they're not in the dock, they will appear there. It's kind of like a rotating thing, but for me, I just don't find it that useful. So I make sure that's turned off too. Otherwise on this menu, I don't change anything else, but there is one more thing I do set up, which is hot corners. I absolutely love hot corners. I've been using them since day one when they came out. Basically hot corners let the Mac do a certain task when you drag your cursor over to a certain corner. And I actually only use one and you'll see by default at the bottom right, it's for quick note, which launches like a little note but I don't find that very useful. What I have in there instead is Mission Control, which opens up all of my current apps and shows them all in the window when I drag my mouse to the bottom right of the screen. After setting all that up, I close down the settings menu and then I go to the dock and remove all of the apps I don't need. This shouldn't take you too long and you can literally just pull them up to the top of the screen and drag them away and they'll disappear. Or you can right click and just say remove from dock. Next thing I saw out is Finder on the Mac. Finder is basically where you find everything, so it's really aptly named, but it's basically just the way you navigate the Mac, very similar to Windows on Windows. So if you come over to Finder, you'll be greeted with the Recents menu. There's loads of things here which I like to change. What you want to do is head up to Finder in the top left menu and then go to Settings, and then scroll over to Sidebar. You can change what you'd like here to pop up. So if you want movies in there, you can put that in or music or anything like that. But generally speaking, there's a couple which I will do. I'll add in the home one, which is just a useful way to get around on the Mac. And I also turn off recent tags because I just don't really use tags that much on a Mac. Then after that, I close that. And actually in the sidebar, you can move things around just by dragging them. So I usually always have things like my desktop at the top and then my documents. I'll drag things like the recents folder and downloads to the bottom, but you can arrange these how you like. It's definitely worth doing because it will help you navigate the Mac just a little bit faster. For me though, one of the most useful things I do for organization is in my documents folder, I make a new folder and I call it project folder. So in here, I keep everything that I need to make videos. So a lot of those things will be like assets, which include music and graphics and things like that. I usually have a lot of files in there. So to keep everything in line rather than just moving around all over the place, if you right click and then go to show view options at the top here, you can sort by snap to grid. And once you close that, that will make sure everything snaps to a very specific kind of grid and it will just make everything a lot neater, which is really good, especially if you've got loads of folders in there like I do. One last thing I do here, which really speeds up my use of the Mac as well. If you go back to Finder settings and then go to general, towards the bottom, you'll see there, it says new Finder window show recents. And when you do that, that basically means every time we open a Finder window, it shows your recents folder. I don't find that very useful because recents is just absolutely everything you've been using at the time. So for me, I'll change that recents folder to my project folder because every time I open Finder, I generally find that's exactly where I'll go and that'll just launch me straight into it. Before we talk about all the apps I use and all the apps I install on every Mac, there's one more thing while we're in the settings to sort out. So if you jump back into system settings, there's something here called Control Center. Now Control Center at the Mac is at the top right, and this is very similar to an iPhone. It gives you kind of quick access to all sorts of quick little settings, which is useful. But in this menu, you can also decide what goes in the menu bar at the top of the Mac, which is great. For me, a lot of these are absolutely fine, but I always make sure I have Bluetooth showing in the menu bar because I connect a lot of Bluetooth things to my Mac. And I also have sound showing in in there as well. So just change that to always show and it will pop up in the top there and you can just change the sound without having to tap it on the keyboard. And then one more thing I do as well is scroll down to other modules and show the battery percentage in there as well. So I can get a proper percentage of the battery showing up in the menu bar. There's a few other things in here which you might wanna have a play around with, but for me, those are the ones that I change. 
Okay, so with all of those settings sorted, I can finally start getting the apps onto the Mac. First place I do this is the Mac App Store. It's kind of good for a lot of stuff, which is really common on Mac. So one of the first things I get on there is Final Cut. Final Cut is what I use for all of these videos, all of my short form content, and pretty much any video output from me. It's fantastic. I just switched from Premiere Pro about a year ago, and it's been awesome. Next up is my to-do list app, which is just Microsoft To Do. I love this. I use it on my phone a lot and it transfers across my entire system. So it doesn't matter if I'm on my Mac or my phone or anything else like my iPad. To do follows me around and it's just a really simple list maker which I really like a lot. Next up there's two like utilities which I like to install as well. First up is Raw Right Away which is basically a photo raw viewer for Mac. I had to pay for this, but it's actually been really worth it. It means I can just press spacebar on any raw file and get a quick preview of it rather than just be stared in the face with a blank file or a big question mark. And the next one I get is called Magnet. Magnet basically lets you organize your windows like you would on a Windows computer. So everything just snaps around and it's really fantastic. Really useful, recommend Magnet a lot, even though I had to pay for this one too. It's just way better than what the Mac does with window management, which to be honest, just isn't great. Next up for me is the Adobe Creative Suite. I download Adobe Creative Cloud and install a bunch of applications from that. For me, that's Lightroom, InDesign, Photoshop, Audition, and Premiere Pro. Even though I've moved off from Premiere Pro, it still does some things better and very occasionally I'll jump into it. And then after that, I download all of my other apps which I use on a pretty much daily basis. That starts with Spotify. That's not on the Mac App Store for some reason, so I have to go to Spotify's website and download and install that. Same with Notion. I use Notion for pretty much absolutely everything. I've made a huge video on Notion before, so I'll drop that below if you want to see it. But Notion is my way of staying on task of everything I do here on the channel. It's got all of my ideas, all of my goals, everything, script ideas, whatever it is to be creative, you name it, I've got it on there. And that's one thing I install from online as well. And the last thing I do download online is Google Chrome. And Safari on Mac, which is the standard browser, is really good. It's nice and quick. Battery life is fantastic and all those things like that. But like I said, I switched from PC and just all of my stuff is on Chrome and it is decent on Mac now. And after installing that, you need to go back to your settings and change the default browser to Chrome. That's in desktop and dock. You just scroll to the bottom and just hit Chrome as your default and then you're basically done. After I downloaded all of those, I put all of those into the dock as well. You can do this by just dragging the icon into them or if you double click to open the app, you can just right click on the icon and then press keep in dock and it will stay there after you close it. Okay, before we go, I wanted to talk about some tips and tricks which I find really useful on here. Let's start with the trackpad. First up, if you swipe upwards with three fingers, you're greeted with mission control, which shows you all of the apps you have open, so you can jump between them nice and easily. Secondly, if you expand with three fingers and your thumb, you're shown the desktop, so you can get to little files and things nice and easily. Or if you just need all of the apps to go away for a moment, I use that a lot, it's really useful. And lastly, if you do have multiple desktops set up, you can use three fingers and swipe between them really easily. I don't actually use multiple desktops that much unless I'm working really heavily in Photoshop or Lightroom or something but this is just another quick gesture to get out of there. I wanted to highlight some keyboard shortcuts I really love on Mac OS as well. First up is just the spacebar. This acts as a preview so if you highlight a file and just press spacebar it will show you a preview of that file if it can so if you need to quickly check a video clip or if you need to look at some text in a document you can do that too. Super super useful. Secondly is command and spacebar and this brings up spotlight and if you haven't used spotlight before it's a really powerful search feature for your Mac. You can type pretty much anything in there and it will hunt for files, it will search the internet, it will do pretty much everything it can to find exactly what you're looking for and it can even answer things on like converting pounds to dollars and things like that and if it does find something you like and you want to preview it you can obviously press spacebar on that as well just to preview what it's going to show which is crazy useful. I absolutely love Spotlight. Next up is command and W and this shuts a window in the app that you're in. So if you're in Google Chrome for instance and you've got loads of tabs open you can press command W and it will close things tab by tab or even if you're deep into finder and you need to close your way back out of those windows you can just tap command and W and it will close them one at a time which is really useful another one I use all the time is command shift 4 which is a screenshot function this lets you draw an actual screenshot and then it goes straight onto your desktop for use crazy useful and lastly probably the biggest and most useful one for me is command and Q this is just a way to quit the current app you're in and if you want to do it quicker than just going up to the close or quit or something like that command Q will get you out of there immediately 
Okay, so that wraps up how I set up a brand new MacBook for everything I do here on the channel, everything I do in a creative sense, and how I just enjoy using the OS. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any tips or tricks or anything which I've missed, then please put them in the comments below so I can see them or help somebody else out. That'd be fantastic. And I will see you all in the next one.